good morning and welcome to our morning virtual service. Today, we'll begin with a word from our pastor, Dr. Richard L. Hall Sr., followed by the Sunday School lesson and church announcements. Which is above every name. 
But that name is not just an arrangement of letters to spell the word Jesus. In scripture, name is often equivalent to revelation, to what is revealed, unknown about someone or something. In the book of Proverbs, chapter 22 and verse 1, it talks about the good name. It is not that Hall is better than McFall. But each of us, Hall and McFall, have good character. You see, my brothers and my sisters, what we fail to realize sometimes is that our reputation is our name. I think I need to say that again. What the people in the community or in your environment think of you, your reputation is your name. What, what do people think when they hear your name? Uh, I, I know some names uh, when I hear them called because of their habits and their behavior. Uh, that's the first thing I think about when I hear their name. So, so your reputation is your name. Therefore, the name of Jesus is, what, is, is about what is revealed about, about him. The name of Jesus is about what is revealed in the word about him. Names of Jesus tell us a great deal about his character as he ministered on this earth. We can draw a great deal of comfort from meditating upon the names of Jesus because his name reminds us of his deep love. Emmanuel, Christ, Lord, Master, the Word, Son of God, the Son of Man. There's no earthly name to compare with our Savior, Jesus. Jesus who died to save us from our sins. On the Mount of Transfiguration, Peter tried to put Jesus on the same level with earthly names. Remember I said, Jesus is a name that's above every other name. But Peter tried to bring Jesus down to the level of earthly names. In Matthew 17 and verse 4, uh, Peter said to the Lord, Lord, it's good for us to be here. If you wish, let us make three tabernacles. One for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. You see, Peter didn't understand what he was doing, but he was trying to put Jesus on the same level with Moses and Elijah. But, but God wasn't having none of that. God, God wasn't hearing that. God, God wasn't hearing none of that. The Bible says on, in the fifth verse, while Peter was still speaking, while he was still speaking, the Bible said, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them. And suddenly a voice came out from the cloud. Voice came out saying, This is my beloved son, 
in whom I am well pleased. Hear him. In other words, there, 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 there's no other name that's equal to that name. No, no other name above that name. You, Jesus was a common name in that day, but 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 they 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 they, they put some dis they distrain, distinguish Jesus by saying Jesus of Nazareth, Jesus the Son of God, Jesus the Son of Man. That there's no other name that's equal with that name. So. As many of us come to the end of 2020, just barely hanging on because of the COVID-19, the economy has taken a big hit. And maybe you lost your job or you're worried that it might happen soon. I think for many people, this would be a different sort of Christmas. One that is less materialistic and more family-centered. My brothers and my sisters, don't be anxious about tomorrow. For those who seek first, the kingdom of God and his righteousness shall be confident that all needful things, whatever you really need, shall be added unto you. It is when we are not sure about God that we become not sure about tomorrow. We like to say that God helps those who help themselves. But, but, but the opposite of that is more nearly true. If Christmas means anything, it teaches us that God helps those who admit that they can't help themselves. Brothers and my sisters, we are so helpless that God sent a baby, a baby to help us out of the mess that we found ourselves in. If you stayed up with a sick child, if you waited in the wee wee hours for a loved one to come home, if you stayed awake worrying about the future, if the cares of life have stolen sleep from you, then you know how long the night can last. The psalmist says, weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. A night may be a long time. And uh, if you experience waiting for your child to come home in the wee hours of the night. The last few hours before the break of day seems to go on forever and ever. But uh, when the light shines, we see everything differently. When, when the light shines, our problems don't seem to be so large. When, when, when the light shines, we have courage to keep on going because Christ is the light. Jesus 
has come into the world to seek and to save the lost. I heard the other day from the incoming president. He was saying that this will be a dark winter. But uh, there's no darker place tonight or this morning than the place of the sin in our lives. We all have those dark places and we don't know what to do about them. The wisest philosophers, nor the Harvard professors, have no answer this morning for the problem called sin. And sin has us in the shape we're in. But when Christ shines his light, he doesn't merely condemn us, but he says, come unto me, believe in me, trust in me. And when we do, our sins are forgiven forever. Christmas means the end of us thinking that we are better than someone else because you're not and certainly I am not. And uh, the more I think about it, none of us are better than the other. We are all mm -hmm, in the same boat. And if it had not been for the Lord on our side, where would we be? You see, we ought to celebrate Christmas because freedom came on Christmas morning. In Romans 6 and 23, the Bible says, for the wages of sin is death. But the gift, Jesus, the gift, Jesus, the gift of God is eternal life in Jesus Christ our Lord. It is a bold confession, a confession that you don't hear much uh, in the church house anymore is a bold confession spiritually to be able to say, I am a sinner. A whole lot of folks don't like the word sinner. But the Bible says all of us have sinned. And so, uh, as long as we pretend that we are okay, or as long as we blame others, or as long as we make excuses for our bad behavior, we are still living in the darkness of denial. And the same is true, my brothers and sisters, uh, about salvation. If you want to go to heaven, then you got to get off your stairway to heaven. Until you do, you'll never, never be saved. Jesus guides us through the darkest moments of our lives. And he's guiding us through uh, this coronavirus. Uh, he takes us by the hand. And he's given us strength to face the most difficult uh, problems, uh, the most difficult circumstances. And he's even given us the joy 
Uh huh. He's given us joy when we would otherwise throw a pity party. Well, the peace that Jesus brings us is the peace that surpasses all understanding. Uh, it is a peace which the believer has something that the world doesn't have. Uh, this peace that uh, we have, you can't buy it. You can't duplicate it. And you can never take it away. Well, Christmas is not about snow and about candy canes and about stockings hung by the chimney. Christmas is about the supernatural truth that God prepared a body and sent his son down to earth to visit us. Emmanuel, God with us. And the good news uh, uh, this morning is that a visitor from heaven was born in Bethlehem so he can die on the hill of Calvary for you and I. Well, uh, will you drop everything uh, this morning and welcome him in your heart? Or are you too busy this year uh, to be bothered with Jesus? Well, uh, we need Jesus uh, more than we ever needed him. Uh, if we ever needed Jesus, well, uh, we sure need him right now. Yes, uh, and I stopped by this morning to tell everybody mm -hmm, that there is something about that name. Yeah, uh, uh, there is something why uh, about that name yes uh, he will hear you well uh, when you call yeah uh, he will let you fall yeah uh, there is something well about that name yeah uh, he will drown away uh, all our tears yeah uh, he will calm uh, all our fear yeah uh, there is something well about that name yeah uh, he will uh -huh, broken heart yeah he will keep you uh, this morning uh, anybody know uh, that he'll keep you yeah he'll mend your broken heart yeah and he'll keep you from falling yeah there is something why about that name yes uh, yes uh, there is something about that name yes uh, he'll pick you up well, uh, when you're down, yeah, he will keep you uh, off the ground. Uh, there is something, uh, yeah, about that name, yes. Uh, he will, when you feel with doom uh, and gloom, yeah, he will come, well, in your room. Uh, anybody here, uh -huh, know he'll come, yeah. And when you're sad, uh -huh, he'll make you glad, yeah. Uh, there is something. Uh -huh, about that name, yeah. When you call him, uh huh, yeah. When you call him, huh? Call him this morning, mama. Call him, yeah. Grandmama, call him, huh? When you call him, uh, he'll bring you meals, uh huh, on wheels, yeah. Call him, uh huh, this morning, yeah. There was something uh, about that name, yes. Uh, he was born, uh huh in Bethlehem, yeah, but he died, yeah, yes he did, he died, yeah, on the hill of Calvary, yeah, there is something uh, about that name, yeah, his name uh, is Jesus, yes, his name yeah, is Jesus, his name uh, is Jesus, yeah, yes, there is something about that name. The Bible says, whosoever shall call on that name shall be saved. I love my friends, Yaya and Utter Mutter and 
and Dada, but their name can't do for me what the name of Jesus can. There is something about that name, a name that is above every other name. You don't have to take my word for it. Call it when you're down and out. Call it when you're afraid. Call it when you're sad. Call it. There is something special about that name. God bless you this morning. And we trust and pray that you realize and understand the power of the name Jesus. That you understand that there is something special about calling the name of Jesus. God bless you. We've done a portion of what God has commanded us to do. And now we come down to the Lord's Supper. The Bible says it was on that same night, just after the Jewish Passover, that Jesus and his disciples were in the upper room, and they all began to look very sad and very sorrowful. As Jesus told them that one of you will betray me, and another will deny me. And they all began to question, saying, Lord, is it I? Is it I, or is it I? And about that time, Peter told John to ask Jesus who it was. And he said, it is the one who saw in the dish with me. He said, the Son of Man goeth as it is written, but woe unto the one by which he is betrayed. For it would be better for him that he never been born. And after supper, when Jesus had given thanks, he took bread. took bread, and he break and he gave to his disciples, disciples, saying, this represents my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. Take it and eat all of it, for as often as you do it, you do show forth my death until I come. Take and eat. This represents the body of Jesus. Take it in. And after supper, when he had given thanks, he took the cup of the fruit of the vine. And he said, this represents the blood of the New Testament, which is shed for the remission of many. He said to the brethren, I may not be able to drink with you anymore until I shall drink with you new in my Father's kingdom. Said to the brethren, drink ye all of it. As often as you do this, you do show forth the Lord's death until he comes. Well, my brothers and my sisters, let me encourage you. The enemy is on the rise. We are in a battle. An unseen enemy. It's a spiritual warfare. And I suggest to you this morning that you be smart, that you be careful, and that you be safe. Remember, social distance, to wash, your hands and to wear your mask. Not only are you saving or helping yourself, but you are helping the people that you meet and the people that are dear to you. Well, it's that time. 
Until the next time, see ya. Good morning, Sacred Arnold. I pray that all is well with everyone and their family. The youth topic today is heritage focus. Matthew chapter 1, verses 1 through 17. Hebrews chapter 1, verses 1 through 5. New Living Translation. Focus verse is Hebrews chapter 1, verse 2. And now in these final days, he has spoken to us through his son. God promised everything to the son as an inheritance. And through the son, he has created the universe. Our story today is about Layla. She is planning for a large family get together and she is thinking about the family members who have passed on. Grandpa Donald came to her mind as she was cleaning the house, preparing for her family. She came across one of Grandpa Donald's old photo albums. Grandpa Donald died in 15 years ago. As a child, she remembers Grandpa Donald sitting with her and flipping through old photos. It was important to Grandpa Donald to make sure Layla knew where he came from. He always took time to teach Layla about their family, and he even typed up the family history, which included relatives who have immigrated from Africa. He put it in a small notebook so that she had a record of it long after that he was gone. Layla was fascinated by the black and white photos, the old-fashioned clothes, and even the fact that none of the people in the pictures really smiled. Grandpa Donald has several photo books from his childhood, and he even the ones with thick cardboard pages that were passed down to him from his late 1800s. Those were the special ones. Layla had small children of her own, and she decided it was a good idea to keep the photo history tradition alive. She sat down with her two kids, sharing stories, pictures, and history about the family and what it was meant to her, and especially Grandpa Donald. The kids enjoyed it very much that she decided it was time to continue to create albums. But... She would create the photos using digital and she will create a website for the family history. It will be a fun project to do with her kids and they will keep the family history alive for generations to come. The gospel are about birth, life, death, and resurrection of our Savior. The Old Testament in this entirely lays the groundwork for the birth of the Messiah. It is a bridge connecting the humanness of Jesus, the son of many and jo- of Mary and Joseph, to the supernatural Christ, the King, the Son of God. While Joseph was the man who reared Jesus, he is not Jesus' true father. Nevertheless, Jesus was heir to all the genealogical history of earthly ancestry. Despite what he might see as family baggage, he grew in wisdom and in statues since Jesus is the Son of God. He is able to pass an internal inheritance to those who followed him. Jesus' followers become one with Christ and therefore without all that Christ inherits. Lord, thank you for this rich heritage we have in your family. We pray for the generation to come. Amen. Remember to be safe, wear your mask, and continue to trust God. Love you all. Thank you.
of you and hoping you had a very happy Thanksgiving. We truly appreciate your prayers during this time that my son Vincent was ill and hospitalized. We are asking that you continue to keep us in your prayers. Thank you for our Thanksgiving dinner. We also appreciated Second Arnold acknowledging my granddaughter's success with business. She was very happy when I sent her the article. Love you all and miss you all, Sister Ceteria, Blue Thomas, and family. All is festive, all is bright. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. I hope your holidays are filled with all the merry moments and little joys that make the seasons bright. Mrs. Johnson and ESLA Family 2020. On November 21st, 2020, Brother Moses Alexander McNeil graduated from Savannah State University with a Bachelor's of Science degree in Interdisciplinary SSU's Jazz Ensemble. He was also and still is an active member of the Georgia Association of Educators. He is currently Assistant Manager at Family Dollar's Department Store and plans to pursue his education certification while continuing to teach and mentor our young people. He takes the model, each one reach one to heart, because it takes each one of us to help reach us all. Good news! You have an extra week to sign up for a gift for one of the 18 children in our Christmas project. We need your help to make this project as successful as it was last year. Please sign up for a gift, then deliver it to the church by December 14th. An extra week, thank you. <laughs> Members, we are preparing for 2021 and are in the process of updating our directory. We are requesting that you complete the survey by December 31st. Please one entry member. If you know a member that is not receiving messages, please advise them to contact Sister Smith at 912-695-3329.
Youth and young adults who are interested in joining the audio visual ministry, please contact the church office. Join us on Tuesday for Bible study. We will be streaming all services on our YouTube channel, the church's website, as well as on Facebook. A link will also be provided each week. Also join us on the prayer line at 7 p.m. on Wednesdays. Dial 1-605-313-5086. The access code is 796275-POUND. Harvest Day contributions, tithes, and offerings, as well as all building fund donations, can be contributed through the GiveLify app in person from 12.30 p.m. to 4.30 p.m. or by mail. Sing joy to the world, sing joy, worship.